Hi, my name is Stephen Grant. Between filming two characters played by the same actor and creating a hippo goddess, the making of Moon Knight was a massive collaborative process. Which scene required over 200 extras to film? Let's find out. Okay, here we go. Stand by and action! Number 1. The Moon Knight costume is beautiful and was a result of everyone putting their heads together to come up with the perfect design. The design of it was a process, a uh, collaborative process. On the legs of the costume are hieroglyphics inscribed that translate to the protecting soldier of the moon, since the word knight did not exist in the ancient Egyptian language. They used fabric that was stretchy enough for movements, but tough enough to survive all the stunts. The partner to Moon Knight is the much more dapper Mr. Knight, and his style makes sense because... Mr. Knight is what Steven imagines is cool. The costume was a custom three-piece suit, and the waistcoat had unique buttons that had the Khonshu symbol on them. His sneakers were adapted to give them a modern look, and straps were added to resemble the look of a mummy. Oddly enough, the two characters originally had their outfits swapped, with Mark Spector wearing the nice suit and Stephen Grant sporting the cow. But they switched it after realizing it made more sense the other way around. I feel like Steven's Mr. Knight, don't we think that? And then they're like, we think exactly, we were thinking the same thing, and, and so then that got switched. Number two. The transformation scenes are some of the most fun and visually awesome of the entire show. But we wanted to make sure that it felt like it was a magical transformation. They wanted the sequences to feel as if the costume was coming from the person, as opposed to the costume appearing in a way that feels disconnected. Having the real practical suit on set was a huge help for the VFX team, who used it as reference when animating the transformations. Number 3. Between Kanchu, Tawedit, and Amit, there were plenty of full CGI characters to go around. The actors were actually filmed on set, and even had real costumes made for their characters. This gave the VFX team great reference material for when they animated the full CG character. So it wasn't just guys in gray suits running around. The actors had green poles extending above their heads to represent their character's height. They even made a full-scale Khonshu head for reference on set. That had to be fun to film with. Number 4. Director Mohamed Diab was adamant about making his sets as accurate as possible. In order to get a high level of accuracy, a giant set of downtown Cairo was built. It spanned about four or five blocks, and green screen lined the outside. They had 255 extras on set, with 55 picture cars driving around. When I got on the Cairo streets, I was so overwhelmed. I like, had actual anxiety. It was so realistic that some of the Egyptian extras told the director that they felt like they were at home. Number 5. Moon Knight has some serious fighting skills, so Oscar Isaac needed to make sure he properly represented the character's skill set. Isaac learned multiple styles of fighting techniques and martial arts, including boxing, wrestling, gymnastic takedowns, and Brazilian capoeira. Isaac also incorporated weapons into his fighting, and you can see him getting a little too into it when he licks his knife. But that was for when he was fighting as Mark Spector's Moon Knight. Fighting as Stephen Grant was completely different. They needed to choreograph a character who had no fighting skills, which proved to be a fun challenge. That's the most complicated things to do uh, when you have to choreograph a fight with someone story-wise who doesn't know how to fight. But I love that. Number six. The fight with the Invisible Jackal during Episode 2 took a lot of prep work from the stunt team. They needed to do a lot of pre-visual work to understand how the fight would flow with an invisible opponent. They ended up shooting the fight scene with stunt people in gray suits that would push and pull the actors and perform the fight. These people were later removed with visual effects, as were any wires and mats used. The result was an awesome scene and the perfect introduction to Mr. Knight. Number 7. When you see the inside of the pyramids on the show, that was mostly a practical set they built and dubbed the Chamber of the Gods. Just how big was it? A whopping three stories tall. This is our biggest set, probably. One of our biggest sets, if not the biggest. They had two Egyptologists and a researcher to help them make the set as accurate as possible without being too cliche. It was such a big undertaking that they had an entire stone shop of people dedicated to just making the statues for the sets. That is true dedication to the craft. Number eight. Another immensely impressive set that was built was Alexander's tomb. 
This set was 100% practical, from the sarcophagus to the paintings and statues. They had several people from an art school in Budapest come in and paint the chamber to give it an authentic and accurate look. Multiple projectors were set up that projected the images and hieroglyphics onto the walls, acting as an outline for the painters to follow. Number 9. Stephen Grant's English accent perfectly suited the character and was so charming, but he originally wasn't going to have it. Oscar Isaac came up with the accent and personality of the character at his house and started doing the voice for his kids. I saw an opportunity to do something really fun. He got some advice from crew members that were from Budapest and London. I could always go to them and be like, how would you say this? What would you say? How do I sound? Does that sound okay? Does that sound okay? They're like, yeah, yeah, mate, it's all right. Number 10. The museum where Stephen Grant works was actually the Museum of Fine Arts in Budapest. The crew transformed three big rooms into their own sets, recreating the Egyptian section of the British Museum. The team made 140 individual pieces that filled the rooms, with the biggest item being over 19 feet tall. The detail in artwork was truly impressive, as they captured the look of real artifacts in a museum. Number 11. The team behind Moon Knight put in so much work and detail into every scene that you may not have even noticed that Steven's apartment was built for a specific purpose. They decided to make it an attic apartment because it would resemble the shape of a pyramid, and Steven's bed was made under a platform as if he was in a sarcophagus, being tuned in. The crew's attention to detail never ceases to amaze us. Number 12. Oscar Isaac was the perfect choice to play Moon Knight, and Kevin Feige had his eyes set on him from the offset. Isaac, however, had never heard of the character, so he did a deep dive into the comics to help him prepare for the role. It was very important to him that he take the mental health aspect of the character very seriously, as he wanted to do a character study on the complexities of Mark Spector and Stephen Grant. Number 13. Oscar Isaac was watching The Good Lord Bird and mentioned to director Mohamed Diab that Ethan Hawke would be amazing to play the part of Arthur Harrow. The same day, Isaac ran into Ethan at a coffee shop and mentioned the idea to him. A couple days later, they grabbed a drink together and Isaac convinced him to be in the show. It was a very easy yes. I mean, I never even thought twice about it. Number 14. Oscar Isaac did a lot of research on dissociative identity disorder because he wanted to make sure he portrayed it in the correct way. He wound up reading a book called A Fractured Mind that he said ended up being his Bible. Really gave him some complexity and, and really made him a character that was fascinating. Number 15. Who is the perfect person to play Oscar Isaac's double? How about his brother? For the scenes when both Mark and Steven were in the same room, they brought in Isaac's brother Mike Hernandez to play his counterpart. So when you see them talking to each other, you're most likely watching Oscar Isaac have a conversation with his bro. The amount of work that went into creating Moon Knight is impressive. Which behind the scenes fact did you find most surprising? Let us know in the comments and thanks for stopping by at The Things.